yes, let's talk a little bit about Raw. Um, before anyone asks the reason why there has not been a DGUSA uh, review up yet is because I have not seen it yet. Um, I was going to watch it yesterday, but to be honest, um, I came down with a cold Saturday, so uh, just yesterday, I had to work yesterday, so when I got home, I just basically fell in bed and slept. Um, it was off today, so slept even more today. I know most of you probably don't care about that, but there you go. But I will stick it with the ROH review, which will be tomorrow. So, there we go. So, let's talk about Raw and all of its glory, shall we? Yes, let's shall. So, we start off, um, Randy Orton went to the ring. He cut a promo. John Cena came out. He was, you know, they were going back and forth with each other. Eventually, Axis came out. Uh, this all led to the main event, which would be tonight, um, where John Cena would be special referee, and Randy Orton would get to pick the opponent of the um, tag partner of his choice. Boy Barrett would get to pick the tag partner of his choice, and John Cena would be the special referee. I don't know why they're doing this three weeks before the pay per view and not, you know, two uh, a week or you know before, but. You know, whatever. It was what it was. So that was what they set up for a main event. When commercial came back, uh, Justin Gabriel and Heath Slater were out there. They took on the Hart Dynasty. I was like, ooh, this should be good. But, of course, it only went about four minutes and wound up with... Uh, with it was okay, um, but not as good as I would have hoped. And uh, we basically got more of the Hart Dynasty being, you know, destroyed in front of us because, you know... WWE and tag team wrestling apparently don't go together for some weird reason that I will never understand. Um, maybe when, you know, maybe when Vince woke up from his coma, maybe that's one of the things he'll bring back is, you know, tag team wrestling. I can hope. Can't I? No, yeah, probably not. Um, then we got uh, R-Truth backstage, you know, on Raw. They keep having R-Truth and John Cena kind of interact. Our truth seems to be like the guy that you know is is Cena's friend and is behind Cena, which tells me that they're probably going to wind up turning our truth heel and probably join Nexus or something along those lines. But I just get that feeling. Uh, then we got um, a uh, promo for SmackDown, which was Edge versus uh, Del Rio, which that should be a good match for SmackDown. Uh, they really seem to be behind Del Rio, which is good. Uh, then we got uh, we got Sheamus who came out. He of course was upset over last week that Santino beat him. Santino came out. Santino said that he'd eaten too much candy um, on Halloween and now had uh, was sick, had a doctor's excuse. But he had found he had found Sheamus a an opponent, and that was Kozlov. And uh, Kozlov came out, got squashed. Um, then uh, Sheamus and Santino had a little bit of his comedy stitch, or I shouldn't say stitch, uh, segment, as Santino was trying to get away from from Sheamus, which didn't work. Uh, Sheamus looked like he was going to throw Santino off of the uh, Titantron steps thing, and then uh, Morrison came out for the save, so there was that. So that was kind of cool. I guess they're, they're really going to go with John Morrison versus Sheamus and... and Wow, let's see. Wow, we won't go into that. Another, you know, Sheamus feuding with another guy that he probably should have been pushed harder than Sheamus. Hmm, just saying. Um, then we had more R Truth stuff with Orton. So Orton picked R Truth as his tag champion. Or his ta tag champion. Listen to me. Ugh, ugh, he being sick. Um, his uh, tag partner. So that was going to be tonight. Uh, then we had Mark Henry backstage. He was talking to someone. Wound up being Pee Wee Herman, even though they were back to back. We got Pee Wee Herman stuff. We got uh, Diva Twister, and we got Lita showing up out of uh, nowhere. So that was kind of cool. Um, then we got Zack Ryder coming out. Uh, they announced that this was his hometown, which if you follow WWE, you know what that means. And out came Ezekiel Jackson. Yeah, this was complete squash. Poor, poor baby. Um, then Wade. Uh, Barrett picked Otunga as his uh, partner for the night, so eh. Um, then we got uh, Pee Wee Herman coming out. He did his little thing. Uh, he basically said, you know, did the secret word thing from his TV show, set a ring. So every time someone said a ring, they had to scream and holler and do all that stuff. And then Miz came out, and uh, we had this kind of 
funny little bit. This went on a little too long, and then Big Show came out dressed as Pee Wee Herman, which was funny. Um, then the GM typed in, and then we had that, and that's what we kind of, I kind of got. The segment went a little too long, but Pee Wee's hilarious, so there we go. Uh, then we got The Miz versus The Big Show. This was okay. Um, I was kind of wondering how they were going to end this. Uh, the Miz basically got himself purposely disqualified, so there we go. That's the only way you're going to beat the Giant is not actually beat the Giant, so there we go for that. Um, let's see. Then we got my uh, cable go out, so I'm not quite sure what happened after that, but then when my cable came back, um, because we had big thunderstorm, so that's why. Uh, Ted DiBiase took on Daniel Bryan. This was, you would think, have gone longer than it was, but didn't. Uh, Daniel, Bryan's, Daniel Bryan beat um, Ted DiBiase in a non-title match. I don't know why they did these. Throughout the night, they did these non-title matches, and then the champions won. So that was kind of strange and unusual. So there we go. Um, then we got uh, Le Cool. Taking on Natalia, yeah, there was a Divas match, Natalia won, yay, we're getting more of that, so there was that. Then we got, for all of you that completely gripe and complain and say, we need the Attitude Era back. Well, guess what? You got an Attitude Era segment. That's what this was. As much as you guys, oh no, this sucked, this couldn't have been an Attitude Era segment. Watch the segment. This was something they would have done in the Attitude Era. But, because... As much as you guys want to play how great the Attitude Era was, they put on shit like this during the Attitude Era, too. So, remember that. So, we got this thing where Vince was comatose, woke up, there was Freddie Prince Jr., basically as a doctor, um, went down, talking about uh, the fact that, you know, uh, Linda had spent $50 million to become a senator, um, it was all a bad dream. It wasn't a bad dream. He had Linda stickers all over him. Uh, then he went down the, the, then he said, well, at least the WWE is okay. And Freddie said, nah, it's not really okay. The Undertaker had been buried. Nexus was still stronger than ever. Cena had joined the Nexus. Um, even Daniel Bryan was the U.S. champion. So, uh, that was all that. Um, he then announced that he had to go to the bathroom. And, uh, maybe he would run for president even. And then he walked out and then there was a, uh, Blumenthal poster on his ass. Yes, this was an attitude segment, boys and girls. Then Stephanie woke up, because apparently this was Stephanie's dream. Stephanie woke up um, and and basically talked to Triple H, who wasn't on screen, he was just off to the side, and said he had a weird dream, and said 